Welcome to Iowa Creators Roundtable. This is uh, the first of uh, what are hopefully plenty of uh, podcasts. Uh, we're here at the Radisson in Roseville, Wisconsin, Minnesota. 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 Yeah. Uh, we got Carter Allen, John R. Thomas, and Tom Hotka. Howdy. And we're just going to kind of ask each other pesty questions. Yeah. <laughs> Who's got the first one? <laughs> oh, uh, we're still spring questions? Well, we're just kind of... We're That's just, my question. Oh, okay. Uh, the answer is yes. Okay. Uh, uh, not illuminating, but a good start. Okay. Yeah. That's my, 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 pesky, que- my pesky question. All right. All right. Pesky question. Yeah. All right. I'm going to ask Tom one. What, what, was the, what was the genesis of 515? How did it, how did it come about? Well, I started doing comics uh, in high school, uh, and I started putting them online, and... Uh, I was doing it into college, and in college I went to a commercial art program at a community college, and I met a handful of guys who also wanted to do comics and put them online, and I just thought it would be cool if we all did it together. And so actually uh, I had a website... I had a website at the time called NyquilDreams.com, which was was the name of one of my first comics. Um, (laughs) And I actually talked to a law professor at the school, and I said, hey, so if I wanted to, like, make T-shirts and mugs and stuff that had the name of my website on it, uh, would it be a problem if I had a trademark? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, you might want to change That's it. a thing. Yeah, so, yeah. That's... So uh, one of my friends who, who ultimately did some comics with us for a while, uh, Kyle, he, he helped me come up with the name 515 Comics. We just kind of borrowed the 515 idea from... Uh, the 515, which is sort of the underground music scene in the Des Moines area. So, so yeah, we stole it, and uh, now it's ours. Well, there it is. I mean, I, yeah, there's no copyright on a zip code, so that, no. that works. Yeah. 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 Area code. Area code, sorry. <laughs> zip code. <laughs> it's late. So, yeah, yeah, 515. No wonder my mail never gets through. Yeah. <laughs> All right, who's next? Uh, okay, well, I guess I had a question, I, and I, honestly, this could be a question for both of you, since you're both creative guys, because uh, I kind of have my own answer to this, but I guess, I guess, uh, you know, do you have a lot of ideas outside of the comics that you have worked? I mean, I know you guys have both done multiple comics, but how do you, like, pick? Because you don't just have, like, one idea at a time, right? Right. Yeah. yeah so, no, um, for a long time, I, I, I kept uh, fairly thick journals and would just kind of you know amalgamate things but it, just in terms of of um you're just talking about like you get a random idea and you think i gotta put that on a shelf and, no, no uh, i mean like or, i mean like how do you decide like this is going to be the uh, comic i make um with comics for me it's is somebody going to draw this <laughs> <laughs> the second one of these guys says yes it's a thing that's my answer <laughs> carter <laughs> um I, w- I would say if well, for me anyway, I mean, it's, it's like, it's kind of, it's kind of a hard, hard way to, it's, there's a hard, I'm having a hard time trying to articulate this, but it's just what I'm into at the, at the, at the time, I guess. Or I, if, if I have a strong enough vision for it, I sit there and go, okay, I can, I can achieve this, this, the, the end product with this idea. And then then it happens um so like so because i'm i'm kind of i i kind of have a, a bunch of uh fire uh, irons in the fire but if i sit there and i look at it and i go yeah okay i could i could get to the end of, i could i could do this then it then it starts you know making progress i guess so and and that's that's why it is with a lot of things that i in my life i would say like, I could run a, a half marathon. Yeah, okay, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. <laughs> right on. Yeah. So it's just kind of like finding, like, what's, what's the, when is it going to be done, and, and can I get to that? <laughs> and that's kind of how you decide what to work on? Right, right. I mean, I'm not going to be able to say, I'm going to draw, like, Jeff Darrow and make a 240-page graphic novel. I, I could do it. I mean, it wouldn't be as good as what he does, but I could start going and, and get to the end of it and be absolutely exhausted and wrecked. And I don't know. Oh, we missed a party. 
Hey, hey, how's it going? Hey, you missed a freaking party? No, I uh, I don't know what, what the the oh, party. Yeah, I wonder if they. I don't know. The was there something back here? Well, is it is it down at Axel's or is it? No, it's right here. Oh, Madison. The, ah. the comic book convention party. This is the room they had it in last three years ago. Yeah. Okay. Oh, but you're right. You're right. Yeah. But it was, I think, didn't we see a sign over at Grump- oh, Grumpy's that they're doing it there? Oh, is it the one over, well, they had they had an after hours there. Yeah. Right, that was the after hours, but they think it started at 8 o'clock. Oh. I don't know, man. They Not told a clue. They use this room because it's empty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you guys threw them out, which was fine. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I don't, uh, yeah, we're with the comic group. But, but uh, I don't know what's if they have anything I'll going on. I'll ask the front desk. Who's yeah. Going on. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah sounds I, good. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, short answer, yes, you missed the party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you know, three years ago, you know, what is it? Well, That's yeah. true. That was the last time I was here when they yeah. did have the, the party. And <laughs> they did have the party this in here. It's so small, though. <laughs> I know. Well, it wasn't well it was attended. Right here, yeah. It was yeah. about that well attended. I wonder if it was. I wonder if it's not the thing down at the... Um, I bet you it's because they said they had a, the banquet room. <gasps> right. At the axles. Oh. Different thing. Could be. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, um, well, that was a good one. Yeah. <laughs> so, All uh, right. back to you, Carter. Oh, what were we? Uh, oh, questions. We're questions. Quizzing okay. each other. Please. Okay. Um, all right. So here's here's the question. Movie production house A comes to you, and I mean this is feel to both of you guys, okay. and says, "We want to option your book. Here's a amount of money." <laughs> the question is. It's spelled J O H. So. <laughs> So how you know how you know as 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 creator as creator uh, you know owner creators you know you you're in charge of of the property that you you've created you're not doing it for hire and and how how much can you know how much input would you want to have if they said we're going to make a a movie based or a TV show based on your book and, and we're going to put your name on this do you say I don't I, once you have the rights, do you know do what you will, or do you say, well, I want to negotiate and get compensation plus some input, so that when they say, oh my God, you're the guy that made that comic, yeah, it was a horrible movie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh man, um, I don't even know. I mean, th- this is something that I've never like fully thought out, just because. I you know I would love to see something that I make become like anything else like an animated series a live action movie a video game like anything like I think it would be great I would love to be involved like just because it's like this is my creation this is my story um, but I also feel like I would be willing to give up a lot uh, just just of the creative process or at least share in it a lot more than I do now because I understand that. I don't know how to make a TV show or a movie or a video game. And so I would definitely want there to be a lot of other input. But, yeah, I'm not really sure. I don't think I would be, like, a miser and be like, I got, we, everything's got to be the way I, I want to do it. Like, like But I also don't think I would be like, okay, you, you guys bought it from me. It's your problem now. Like, so I... I think I'd fall somewhere in the middle, I guess, if that answers the question. It does, it does. It does. <laughs> See, now, I, I fall in the camp of if they're going to put my name on it, I would say uh, either I have, like, a load of involvement or just send me a check. Because, <laughs> because it, you know, it's like, okay, because I'd be willing to change things. I mean, I, I, I've been in this position uh, twice with numbers. And the first time was the more interesting version, but – where you know, guy flies out and said wants to have a meeting. Says, "Now I was thinking about changing this, this, and that." I said, "That's fine." I said, "If you go too crazy, just call it based on a graphic novel by, and my name fits just as nicely under that." So they, it, they, it, it, it just has to be interesting in the end to me. If right. it if it stunk out loud and my name was on it, I'd be fine with that okay. because it'd be like, "Yeah, that guy, <laughs> Roadhouse, Roadhouse Two, that was me." <laughs> That's fine. I would. I would. Shit, I'd wear that like a badge. Right. right. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's a it's a it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting question because we're in a, a day and age now where this is, you know, if you go back to, um, if you go back into the early 
part of the 20th century, there was this big, huge rush to, based on the novel, right. movies. And there's tons of them. There's tons of them that have been lost on the piles of history. I mean, I was watching a trailer for one. It was called Tahiti, or Haiti, <laughs> with Alec Guinness. And it was like, based on the best-selling novel. And I'm like, I was, never, it, was that a Michener? I think so. I, yeah. Something, yeah you, you know, you sit there going, well, it's not gone with the wind. But anyway, the point is that, that we are in the era of it's now the comic book is the, 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 the thing that they're chasing after. I mean, you got <clears throat> Walking Dead and you've got well, all the Marvel stuff and you got – it's different now. I was just reading that uh, Strike Force Morituri is going to be a thing. Right. Wow. Yeah, which is I. They're just yeah. They're just people like what? I don't remember that, but yeah, it's it's a it's it's a Marvel thing and it's right. out there. Right. So, <clears throat> I think in the uh, the post Walking Dead world, we have more people that are saying, "Hey, look, you know, I." Not only is there some monetary compensation to be had, but also, this could be my job. Yeah. Kirkman is. Making not you know the, the the comic book compared to what he's making on the TV show, it's just like I would say it's night and day. Like yeah, comics sell well, but hey man, I'm an, I'm working as a TV producer now. I can go in and say now I want to be a movie producer. Now I want to have you know. Uh, so it's 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 a lot. You know when we got when when we started doing stuff, it was like. Oh, you'd hear stories about people getting their stuff optioned, and you know you got you got your stuff optioned, and and you'd go, okay, well then you just get a you know they they hand you some money and they maybe have a conversation and well and, and the the one rule out there for you kids is if they make if, if if somebody offers an option, set an end date. Yeah. Never just say, oh yeah, you can just do that whenever you say you have to have a movie by blank or your option's done. Right. That, that's right. a good call. It's a good tip. Yeah. It's yeah. It's solid. Believe. Yeah. I, I remember that because we we did that because I was like, okay, you have two years to make this thing. It's like that's fine. Didn't happen. Great. Yep. Keep the money. <laughs> I bought some comics right there. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Back to me. Oh boy, that was a good question. See, mostly I get I get caught up in historical things. Who who, who wins in a fight, Hulk or? Uh, well, who beats the Hulk? See, <laughs> all right. Now, well, maybe let, let's go. Well, let's go this way with it because <laughs> this is. Let's think of it in terms of questions that one of us can uniquely pose to the other two because of, of like for instance, I'm just I just write with okay. the occasional scribbling of crayon, right? And you guys are writer artists. So, so does that make us better than you? No. <laughs> Different. Different. Response. God damn it! <laughs> I'll go to my grave on that one. You're specializing yourself into a corner, Thomas. <laughs> I'm gonna be obsolete. <laughs> Those balloons could be filled with anything. Helium. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So your question. My question, and I, I, I already know this about uh, about Carter. I guess so. This is kind of cheating, but have you have you worked as just one of those things with someone else and if so what was the difference for you i mean for you what are the practical differences between being the guy who is the beginning and the alpha and the omega and just being the omega or the alpha <laughs> there's my question you shall not pass my bridge until i hear it well i've <laughs> I, i'll let i'll let I'll let you think about it. I yeah. I've done both. Okay, so as a as a somebody who's, it's easier for me to be an artist doing something that somebody else has written than for me to write something that I expect somebody else to draw. Because for me, it's like when you when I get handed a script, I it, it's based on my, my interpretation of the of the event or of what I'm reading. When it's me writing it down, it's like as a visual, you know, as, as somebody who draws. I'm like, I have a specific idea in my head. And so it's like, 
there's been only a couple of times where that's happened where I've handed it off to somebody and it's come back and I'm just been like, uh, that's, that's not what I would have drawn. And it's hard to let that go because you have to say, look, I'm just the writer here. I have to trust my artist to do it the way that they're going to do it because I wouldn't want to have that, you know, that, I mean, I'd like to have input, but not like, oh, well, geez, that's just terrible. That's so awful. How dare you draw them with such tiny ankles? <laughs> it's, 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 clearly, it's clearly implied in the script <laughs> that they would have very large, healthy ankles. <laughs> it's subtext. Can't you see? Can't you see? <coughs> the, the way I've written the... They're called the squatters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the title. It's all in the title. Yeah. Okay, over to you, Tom. Uh, well, I don't, I don't know that I've ever, I, I have, I guess I have worked as just a writer and I have worked as just an illustrator, but it's for, not not for long term things. So like I have written just like little mini chapters or little mini stories for other people to illustrate uh, for next twos for my series, like for the backs of my books to have like extra content. Uh, but those, uh, it's like three or four pages, you know, it's like a handful of panels, you know, no more than a couple of dozen panels. And I write it totally differently because I'm writing it for someone else, which, which is, is kind of an interesting experience because I'm trying to write in a way where it's like, I'm trying to make you, the artist, see what I'm seeing in my head. So I have to write it differently because when I write scripts for myself, it's just like I'm just writing things to remind myself of what I've pictured in my head. But uh, as far as like working as just an illustrator, um, so, so, so writing for other people I find very difficult. It's worked out well, but I think it's been because it's been characters and settings I've already created and that they can use as reference and... I, it's only like three or four pages, but but it's still a lot harder for me to write that way. Illustrating for other people, I a comic that I did before Nextus, I started out doing everything myself, and then pretty much I I kind of handed writing over to my friend Kyle, who I mentioned before, and uh, like I I still kind of wrote the skeleton of the story, but he basically laid out all the pages, and it was great. It was so easy. But again, that was kind of that was kind of a special circumstance because I had already created the setting and the characters, and he just sort of built on it. So I already knew everything that kind of, and he already knew everything like how it was supposed to go and how it was supposed to be. But I just didn't have to like think about it as much, which was great. So I, I don't feel like I've ever had like a true experience of like just being an illustrator on a project or just being a writer on a project because I'm still so intimately involved. With everything that I've I've split up, I'm very like I, I've always been very like I gotta be in charge of the project. <laughs> like it's hard for me to let go. It really is. So mm-hmm. I, I I would have a lot of difficulty just like can you just write a comic strip for me? Like no, <laughs> no I don't, I don't think I could. <laughs> See, and that's interesting because of the the, the, the terms both of you used, uh, we're talking about what you what you see as you as you write or as you think about these things. And just as the writer, I, I think about hearing them. That's pretty much where I live when I do things, is I hear these characters talking and, and talking to each other and, and trying to elicit different things from each other or challenge each other. So I, 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 I'm not often, and, and Carter knows this too, is I don't often put visual things like, I want to see this in a right. script. It's, it's, it's more like a screenplay. Hmm. So that's interesting. So I think, see, there you, there you go. I learned something. <laughs> Uh, okay, well, I have a question, and this is this is kind of mostly for you, John, because you're our writer guy. Okay. But, uh, but if you can weigh in on this one, too, by all means. But I was just thinking, so kind of along the same lines as my previous question, so has there ever been, like, something that you've written that you're, like, you have, I, I know you just said you don't necessarily think visually so much, but has there ever been something where you're, like, this is special and I really want to make sure that this is done right and I don't want just the first artist who walks up and says, I'll do something for you to do it. Like, is there ever something where you're, it's like a personal enough project that you're like, I got to find like just the right exact person for this. And I, you know. Well, you know, um, generally the genesis of, of most of the projects I do are, 
uh, are things where the artist is there for the inception of the idea, if, or if not for the, the inception, the, the development of it. So generally, they're already in play when these things are being determined. Um, so I don't really run into that conflict. It's I've never had the case where, you know, by the time it comes to a script that something comes out that I just go, oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I had in mind at all. Because we're talking about it the whole time. And I'll know early on if something isn't going to play. And and it, it, it comes down to a, the, the trust I have with these guys because... I mean, all of them have told me at one point or another because there have been those times where I've tried to determine action <laughs> and I get the patient, okay, John, this would be eight pages and then it'll go through the door. <laughs> so no, okay, all right, all right, you're right, all right, all right. You know, I was like, okay, okay, okay. So it, it, it isn't really a thing for, uh, you know, it, it, because like I say, I, if I think about it visually at all, uh, I'm I'm thinking of it in terms of a, a, a directorial style more than anything else, not so much a uh, an art style. So it's 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 really a matter of the flow of panels is sometimes very important to me. But there have been other occasions where it's like, yeah, I think it should be like juxtaposed like this, and they're like, okay, that's fine, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but it's it's very much a collaborative process, and and I, w- I wouldn't have it any other way because. The story, I, I always say this, every every comic is a story told twice. It is a story that is written, and it's a story that is drawn, and each that those are two stories. And when you're doing it right, those two stories tell the same story. <laughs> 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 All right, Carter, your answer. Any, anything to add? Uh, I don't have anything to add. I Now, I have ideas for stories that I would say... Dear Walt Simonson, <laughs> <laughs> drop, what, drop what you're doing. Thor walks into a bar. You might, <laughs> you might want to sit down when you hear me tell you this, but I've got this great idea. It's a Beta Ray Bill story. No, I, um, no, I, I would say, you know, for, for yeah, there would be people that would say, oh, yeah, that'd be awesome to have, you know, Bill Sinkiewicz draw whatever, but nothing – that I've ever actually written. I, I you know, like I have a, a an idea, but yeah, that's, that's also like saying, what happens if I run, what would happen if I owned a sports franchise or if I was president of the United States or if I was the first man on Mars, it's not happening. So I, I it's just a, what if I won the lottery? What would I do? Oh, I'd buy a new house. Okay. Yeah. So, but it, I can see, I can see how that would be, at a at a at a different process, at a different working uh, you know uh, situation where you are, some editor comes and taps you on the sh- shoulder at at company A and they say we want you to write this story, and and you sit there and you go okay so and but editor A at company A is going to say well we've got this one guy that you might want to we, we, I think we'll pair you up with some I, you know it's it, it's a different yeah it's a whole different. I have, I have a nightmare like that, you know. Oh yeah. I mean, it's yeah because it's. I have two comics nightmares, and one of them is where they just say, "Okay, so uh, we want you to write a story. It's about baseball, and here's this uh, here's this guy who you know, yeah. it, 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 he's going to draw it with his left hand because his right hand's broken. Make it work." And you know, it's like, uh, no, I think I'll just die now. And the. <laughs> My other comic stream is that I dream I'm at a 4-H uh, fairgrounds thing, and instead of uh, pies being judged, there's just one comic on every table, and I'm look, walking around, and someone says, Alan Moore's coming, and I flee. That's my other comic stream. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me what it means. No, I, <laughs> the, the, I, I, yeah, that's – and, and, and that's um, a different kind of uh, – I mean, that, the, the collaborative process, um, depending on what – level you're at you know at what stage of the in the the pecking order i'm gonna call it the pecking order um i always i always like in comic books and any in any entertainment media uh is it's like being in a garage band at you know you start out where you're like okay i'm getting the band i'm getting a band together i've got instruments i'm doing stuff i'm able to create this and then you go on the road with it and you try to get fans. You try to get the word out, and you try to spread spread the, the music, right? And so there's been I'm not going to name any names, but there's been some people out there that have, have degraded or have, have <laughs> de- 
<laughs> they've 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 looked at no well no they 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 um I shouldn't say degraded but what they've done is they've they've they they, right. they look down on that level of the process mm. they say you're no good you're not a professional you don't make your living off of this so go away it's like well if we did that in music you would never have another band because that's where I mean. Or anyway, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent, but but what I'm saying, but but so at this level, right where we're at now, we're we're doing things like this, and then at some other level, it'll be okay. I somebody hands me a script, and I, I hand over some art, and or I write a script, and it goes gets put off into the nether and comes back, and so who knows? I don't know. Hmm. All right. Uh, okay. Want to yeah. do another round? Sure. Sure. All right. Uh, I think Carter, you're up, or if somebody has one. Um, you go, if you got one. I think I, I, yeah. I, I kind of want to ask about selling. Okay. Um, because we've been doing that all day today. Yeah. We've been at SpringCon, you know, uh, pressing the flesh and, and pushing the paper. Mm-hmm. What's something about selling your own work that surprised you to find out? Let's let's ask it that way. Mm. What's something? Uh, what's a what's a myth you had about selling your own work that just popped like a balloon on you? Or you can fra- or or you can answer it as, uh, what's the what's the most interesting thing you've learned selling your own work? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I, I've got I've got a couple of, of of points to put on this. I find that it's easier to sell somebody else else's creation than it is my own. I go with that because I you know like when if we're at the table and. You you know John you go to you know water the roses. I do have lovely roses. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Um, and they and somebody comes up and I said oh hey this is Zoo Force, and I'm I'm like oh yeah I can I break it down because that's you know I'm, I'm breaking it down. I say okay it's you got you got the guy with the six foot tongue you got a polar bear that can read you got a chicken that's the reincarnation of. Pythagoras and the guy with the six foot tongue and people just light up. And then when they when somebody comes to me with what's this? Well, this is Nikki Harris. And I go, oh, what to say about Nikki? Oh, Nikki. <laughs> <You know? laughs> because because on it, it's it's like it's like um, if you had kids and somebody said, well, tell me about your niece. Like, it, be like, which one's your favorite? <laughs> yeah, right, right, like, yeah, yeah. Ah. But you, you know, like if, if you talk about somebody else's kids, you can break it down into very succinct um, impressions. Whereas if somebody came to you and said, "Well, tell me about Junior," and you'd be there, you'd sit there and go, "Well, what about Junior? What is he? <laughs> well, you know, he's he, he's got you know the and he does this and he's oh he's really good at that and and he just." And and not not to say that kid, people can't shut up about their kids, but they can't. They, but they can't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, the the filter goes away. Yeah. You don't want to be an editor with something that's right here to you. And so you, I find that I stumble, mm-hmm. and then I try to do like a short, succinct message, and I'm like, oh, I'm not doing it service. I'm I'm, and then you're like, you could break it down, and 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 edit. And you try to do that, and sometimes it, it pans out, and sometimes it doesn't. But like I said, it's easier for me to, to talk about somebody else's work than it is my own. So, um, so that, that that you know, that's I think that answers the question with two different things on that. Yeah. Okay. How about you, Tom? Um. Yeah. I well, first of all, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> um. I really don't like selling my own stuff. I don't like selling myself and my work to people. It makes me very uncomfortable. I wish I could just give everything away. <laughs> and I, I kind of do because I do a webcomic, you know? I mean, you can read my whole story online for free. <laughs> but I do try to sell things, but it's really hard. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I... The question was, what was I most surprised about? Or what's the most, what's the most interesting thing you've learned about it? I mean, something you didn't know when you started. Um, yeah, see, because I knew it would be hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that don't count. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so what, what has surprised me? I, hmm. 
I don't know, really. I I think I've learned a lot about about people at conventions, <laughs> and I feel like I've learned a lot about about uh, people as far as just uh, like how to talk to someone and not feel like they're being like sold to. <laughs> I I don't know. I I guess that's been kind of an interesting experience. I I don't know. I, honestly, I've learned more about just conventions because really I've only like sold stuff at conventions like or to people that I know and so so really I, I just feel like I'm learning more and more about about how to do convention stuff and I find all of that very interesting um, but uh, but I I don't know I don't know that I could pick one thing that's that that either surprised me or that I found the most interesting it's just been it's been a struggle for me to decide how to do it without feeling like I'm kind of being a, a schmuck or selling my soul a little bit. Like, so I find myself just saying things that other people have said about my comic because I can't. Well, you can use that stuff. Yeah. That's called criticism. Well, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's like I can't come up with a little spiel about my comic, so I just got to do it. I, yeah. promi- I, prom- I <laughs> promise you it can be done. Yeah. Because I. I, I I have a set a set of speeches for everything I have because that's I have the same problem. You know what's numbers about? Well, you know it's about a lot of things. Oh shit! You know <laughs> that must be the writer. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I my my policy is you have a three sentence breakdown. You have a fourth optional sentence to go for if they look like they're on the on the on the fence. And I've just been fooling with that for years now, and just trying to. You know, just build it. Look for the things that made somebody light up and put it in and then leave it in until it doesn't work anymore and then take it out again. And it's a process. And it gets a little robotic. I mean, you, anybody who sat next to me at a convention has heard the damn Lost in the Watch speech a million times now. And I could probably sell yeah, Lost Yeah, the see, there you go. And that's, there you go. Teach people to do it for you. Um, and it, it's always... I actually often get mistaken for a representative instead of a creator at, at, at other places. I mean, it, it happens a lot where, like, well, did you do any of these? Yeah, I wrote all of these. Oh, really? Yeah, well, you know. And I take that as a compliment because, yeah. you know. Well, you know, to, to, to speak to that, um, I think sometimes people have this perception of, well, if you're the guy that wrote it or you're the guy that drew it or both, then why are you here? Right. Why are you the one that has to sell me? Why are you the guy that's selling it? Yeah. And it's like, well... Okay, you got me. I'm not famous. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Yeah. So it's... I'll go now. Yeah. (laughs) So some... some dirt. Yeah. (laughs) Shucks. So so it's... Yeah, it's... it's, Oh, geez. Yeah, it'd be nice just to... You you look at... You go to these things enough and you look at what works or what you think works... And you look at what doesn't work, and, and you go, well, okay, so there's a line around the block for this because this is good and popular, and it's got name recognition. And then you say, oh, well, what? it's just a guy sitting there. I'm like, yeah. And you go, oh, okay. But then you sit there and go, well, how did that, if you went to back to that guy or that woman, you said, well, go back to the beginning. They, were, they, they had to hash it out. They had to slog it out. They had to pack all their drums and crap in the van and they had to truck on down to Keokuk, Iowa on a Sunday night so they could play at a roadhouse and earn some you know, scratch, but also to just say, hey, look, the next gig that comes along, it's going to be a bigger gig. And then you're going to have to carry less stuff. And then the next, you know, you're, you, next thing you know, you got roadies doing it for you. And I'm doing the band analogy again. but I, I know, I like this comic artist as musician analogy <laughs> it's scrappy it yeah. is and, and 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 it's and you know you you pick up on this uh if you if you live in anywhere anywhere where there's a music scene and you you hang out with some of those people you know with the, the people that are involved in that enough and you see and it's like wow it's just like a, a parallel uh, you, you see a lot of the you know i i put all my blood sweat and tears into the cd and you're like okay now begins the that you know that part of the journey well so. you know and musicians are a pretty sympathetic bunch when i complain about issues with comics and selling and things like that they right. just they nod sagely yeah 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, it's 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 rough, but uh, it's worth it. I I I, mean, I I'll I, I know what'll happen tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm, you're, you guys are going to see the Carter Allen long face. <laughs> it happens at every convention. It happens every year. I, I sit there and go, why am uh oh, oh, so miserable? And I'll be like, you know, and like. Okay, then I'll, I'll I'll go back to the world, and then I'll I'll come back to this world, and I'll be like, okay, I want to do it, you know. I don't. It's it, yeah, it's it's worth it. I, it makes me it makes me happy to hear you say that because that's something that I've told a lot of people that it's like at every show I've gone to, every single one. And I mean, I haven't been to a lot of shows, but every single show I've gone to, I've hit a wall at some point. Sometimes it's a first day, sometimes it's a second day, yeah. but I hit that wall, and I'm like, I'm kidding myself. What the hell am I doing here? Right. Nobody gives a shit about me or what I'm doing. Right. This is a joke. Right. And then I go and I walk away from the table for a minute and I'm like, shut up. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Just go back there. Right. Like, you're here already. Yeah. Do it, you yeah. asshole. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is what the fleeing from Alan Moore dream means. Right. Right. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> because, you, you know, the, the next... The next uh, you, you go to one of these things and you bump into somebody that you bumped into the last one, and they recognize your stuff and they say, "Hey," and then you say, "Oh, all right," and then you're like, "Okay, so I'm actually like reaching some people out there," and and I'll, I'm not gonna lie, I, I I get to the point where I'm like, "Is it is it worth it?" And I'm like, "I'm gonna no matter what happens, I'll keep doing making comic book stuff, art, whatever." Uh, until I can't physically do it, and that's it. I mean, there's you'd ha- I'd have to be mortally wounded and not part of the mortal mm-hmm. coil. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that's I, I, a long time ago. Jeremy Smith. Somebody asked Jeremy to draw a, a picture of what it was like for us to work together on comics. He and I, and uh, he drew a picture of himself uh, sitting in a chair, drawing, and I was lying on a psychiatrist's couch. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think that's it. I think he's prevent. All you guys are preventing like an eight state kill spree. <laughs> that's, oh, well, that's good. <laughs> oh, oh, only eight. Only eight. I'm getting old, man. <laughs> He'd get caught eventually. Yeah. yeah. The small states. Oh, it's not the big. No, ones. no, no. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use the Quad Cities. I'm going to duck south. I, the only thing I'll add to that, the whole uh, selling thing is uh, this is an anecdote that Carter's heard a long time ago at a Wizard World convention. Uh, it was just me at the table. It was one of those things where, you know, everybody's got to pee, whatever. But it was right after Ferris X Volume 2 came out. I was just staying there, and this young lady walks up, and she walks straight up to the table, puts her finger on um, the, the second volume, the new volume, and says, there's another one of these? And I'm thinking, ha, this is great. All right, boom, sale. So I'm you know, talking to her, about, yeah, yeah, so it continues the story. She says, oh, this is so so great. And she's saying so many nice things, I, I think. You know, well, I'd say, well, you know, uh, I'm the writer. And she stops, completely stops talking, and takes one large step back from the table. And she doesn't buy the book. And I think to myself, how did I screw this up? <laughs> Am I not what you expected? Am I, I mean, was there an expectation? What? I have no idea what happened there. None whatsoever. But it just seemed to me so obvious to say, oh, well, you know, because, you know, like, I'll sign it, whatever, you know. Right. That was it, man. So I, I, that's, the, that, that's the irony and the mystery of selling, yeah. is that you would think that was a sure thing, the surest possible thing. Right. And you got nothing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you you would at a uh, and if you went to a, one of the bigs, you said uh, one of the big two or three, and you'd say this happened at a show. They would do polling data. They would have a, a focus group. They have that kind of resource. We don't. You don't have that, so you, you're left to guess, and that's that's part of the the frustration and the and the. Uh, it, it, you know, you sit there and go, wow, yeah, wait, 
come back. What happened? You can't do right, that. Right, 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 right. You can't do that. Right. I have a four-page thing for you to fill out. Yeah. yeah. Before you go, could you, could you take this quick survey right. and tell me why you didn't buy anything? Just, just, just have a plant in the crowd and say, before you walk away, we'd like to do a quick exit interview from yeah, this. Yeah. I've got a scan drawing sheet for you. Well, he freaked me out. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> just. I didn't think that this actually came from a mortal being. It came from a, uh, like a, the under, you know, like. Uh, that's the kind of shit yeah. that, like, well, maybe if he was wearing a tie. You know, it, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. focus, focus groups will drive us all to hell. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna, uh, this, will, this will be my last question. Okay. Uh, for me, anyway. Uh, outside of anything that you've produced up to this point, in terms of, like, merchandise, okay. if you had... A piece of 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 mem- uh, a memorabilia inspired by something that you've created, cool. and it, it, there's no budget, okay. right? It's right. it's like what uh, you know, like okay, I've got company A on the line, and you, they said, w- okay, we're going to sell. We want to sell pro. We want to sell stuff based on your your creation. <laughs> Sky's the limit. What would it be, and why? So a tie-in product. Right, right. So, you know, like action figures or board games or puzzles or amusement parks. You know. Yeah, I, I got this one. Okay. Uh, I, it would definitely be toys for me. It would be like an action figure line. And the reason would be because most of the characters and a lot of the story elements from my comic came from playing with toys when I was a kid. Uh, you know, like Lego Men and Constructs and like all kinds of, like, you know, I made some of the stuff and some of the people that happen. And I mean, that's why I'm so attached to it. Right. And so that that would be so great if I could be like, hey, like, like now I can, I can do that for you. <laughs> but, but I think it would be really cool. And I, I think, too, that that would kind of like, like help to tie in with with the whole like heart of the story is just sort of imagination right. and like here are the characters I've created now you put them in your story and like you play with them how you want to and because that's all I'm doing it's <laughs> just playing with them but I'm drawing them so oh. so yeah I I actually used to my answer used to be Night Angel Spaghettios just <laughs> but. Um... Since you took since you took action figures, which is the the right answer in all cases. <laughs> uh, actually, I, anymore, I I I somehow picture a, a, a Chuck E. Cheese style jug band with four Captain Cats as my <laughs> real dream. Four Captain Cats. One playing a banjo, another one playing the piano, the other one yelling silence. <laughs> I would take that. I would sit in front of that all goddamn day and play Ice Ice Baby on it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I, um, yeah, I, the, the yeah the correct answer. Is, I mean, is is toys. I mean, you'd want to have, you know, especially with the the stories that that we we tell. It lends itself to the characters are so vivid and so distinct, and that's important with that sort of thing. You you, you can't just say, well, it's a bunch of. I'm, okay, it's a bunch of homogenized characters that you can't tell one from the other. Cartoons don't work like that. Or, you know, action figures don't work like that. You have to have a big orange one and a small blue one and a, a big red one and a fat red You know, it's like, so you have to have variety. And I think that a lot of the stuff that we do is all fits right into that. You know, you've got good guys and bad guys and you got, you know, really bizarre looking ones and really normal looking ones. And so... Like you said, when when kids sit down there and tell their stories, they have choices. They have a palette. It's a physical palette. They're like, oh, look, I've got... Here's Luke Skywalker. He's the blonde one. And here's Chewbacca. He's the brown one. And, you know. and, they, and they all have this weird thing on the bottom of their arm. But then there's a lightsaber. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or maybe it's... You know, yeah, I mean... Um, so, yeah, the toys, you know, definitely. Uh, Lego sets and, and whatnot. I, I would say, uh, you know, you know the, it's a tough call, but I would, I would want a pinball machine. That's good. Oh, man. That's good. That's a good call. I mean. That's a good one. You could, there's so many ways of presenting it. And, 
and I've seen so many different properties getting the pinball treatment that you could you could literally make it as simple as you wanted to or as just elaborate. Um, it could go in the arcade with the uh, Captain Cat Jug Band. Yeah, there you go. There you go. That would. Oh man, I can just see him like. I can just see him p- pistoning up and down. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Ice, That's, ice, baby. baby. <laughs> <laughs> would, would he have? Would he have a microphone in front of his little microphone in the scratching <laughs> post? <laughs> He'd like pull it out, drop it, and lean into the. Yeah, there you go. That would be perfect. Oh, yeah. oh god, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh boy. So, oh. well, day two tomorrow. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, we're gonna wade into that. You're darn right. Get it ready. Get it done. Yep. Well, from some random room in the Radisson that was apparently going to be the after party, uh, this is uh, Carter Allen, uh, Tom Hotka, and John Ira Thomas signing off. Well, good night, everybody. Good night. Good night.